Hi, welcome to the analysis and design of a flyback converter. This is part 13, how a PWM pulse width modulator works. Okay. Okay, uh, PWMs or pulse width modulators or in about uh, just about any products they're used in computers, blackberries, cellular phones and so forth okay and why and how are pulse width modulators used in everyday life okay what are the functions okay well before you can ask uh, why they use you have to have a little bit of a background okay uh, we use why we use the PWMs if we didn't have PWMs then we would need to use linear regulators and typically when you use the linear regulators they're very inefficient they waste power okay so basically the efficiency is the main uh, driving uh, drive uh, for using PWMs okay now efficiency is defined as the output power divided by the input power okay in this case we have this uh, this this schematic and I have a 5 volt uh, line coming in and uh, this can be any three terminal uh, linear regulator and uh, you can feed this signal in the 5 volts and you'll have an input current of 108 milliamps okay and then the output will output uh, let's say 1.5 volts okay at 100 milliamps into a 50 ohm load okay so you have this power going out okay so basically the output power is going to be 150 millivolts or milliwatts of power okay and the input power is going to be the 108 times the 5 volts is going to be 540 okay so that's the input power okay so if you notice you have a lot more input power and much less output power so where's the rest well 390 milliwatts is wasted and it's wasted how well it's converted into heat okay that's why these three terminal uh regulators usually need a big uh heat sink okay so in this case if you were to divide uh the output power by the input power you would have an efficiency of 27.7 percent okay so that's very very low efficiency and and if you have let's say a device that is being powered off of a battery well you wouldn't have devices that would last as long they would basically run your battery down why because most of it is converted into heat okay and that's what this statement is that it uh, PWMs uh, are used to extend the operating time of the batteries by reducing the wasted power okay now switching power supplies on the other hand are very efficient okay and uh, this is an example of a buck reg regulator okay and uh, we're what uh, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use ideal switches uh, to explain this concept okay if you already watch uh, some of the uh, videos on uh, buck converters you'll know the operation of how these work but basically you have a switch two switches okay and they work opposite of each other in other words when one is on the other is off and vice versa okay so in this case we're gonna assume that these are perfect switches okay and just it's kind of a little bit of a hand wave assuming that they're perfect switches okay in reality there's no perfect switches there's always a little bit of a parasitic resistance but assume that they're 
ideal and assume that your inductor is ideal and your capacitor is ideal okay so that's why it says here ideal switches do not consume power which is our assumption and then the ideal inductor and capacitor capacitor do not consume power so theoretically if this doesn't consume power that doesn't consume power and neither of your uh, passive devices consume power well that means that whatever power you're feeding in is coming out so theoretically if you have perfect devices you can theoretically uh, get uh, efficiency of 100 percent but in reality you don't you get them probably close to the 96 97 percent uh, efficiency on a buck converter okay so using ideal components the theoretical efficiency limit is a hundred percent and as I mentioned before practical efficiency range ranges from 90 to 97 considering uh, the non ideal components okay now switching power supplies are very efficient because they use a system or they use uh, the technique of modulating the width of the of, uh, of a pulse okay so by regulating this width in other words you can shorten this time on where it's on for a short amount of time or you can increase the time by increasing the time that it's on okay now it'll switch at the same frequency in other words the positive will occur at the same time so basically you don't change frequency the frequency stays the same but what changes is is the negative going edge in other words the negative edge moves around in this direction and moves around in this direction okay so let's see what I have here it says when s1 and s2 alternative switch a pulse width is modul modulated square wave is produced yes in other words if you have five volts here when you switch this on you get a five volts this is off and basically if you were to put a scope here you would see a square wave that looks sort of like this okay and basically what you're doing is by modulating this back and forth in this direction you're changing the time that is on or at least the average okay and if you get that kind of a waveform at this point then all you need to do is connect a an inductor and a capacitor and what it does it averages uh, this waveform into its average so basically what you're looking here on the on the right side of the inductor it's the average of this uh, modulated uh, pulse width okay so basically that's this statement the LC network filter filters the high frequency and when I say high frequency most of the high frequency is on the uh, are writing actually on the leading and the trailing edges that's where the high frequency harmonics are so you filter that and you end up with the DC value that looks very similar to that okay okay so this is a little bit more just to make sure that you understand the concept okay the output voltage of a switching power supply is regulated by varying the duty cycle okay so basically again I just want to reiterate this make sure that it's clear that the frequency which would be uh, the leading edge these do not change these are fixed that that edge that's the, the the leading edge stays the same what moves is the trailing edge in other words this 
can move in this direction, okay, which will give you a low duty cycle, or it can move in this direction toward the second leading edge, and it can, will give you a higher duty cycle, okay. So by varying this, the this edge back and forth, you can vary it. Uh, you can vary the average voltage. Okay. Now, the average voltage or the output is determined by the duty cycle times your Vn. Okay. What does that mean? Well, let's say if your duty cycle, in other words, let's say that this this edge is at 30% of the on of the time then what it does is 30% times 5 volts you would get an average voltage of 1.5 volts okay so by basically moving this in this direction decreasing the duty cycle or increasing the duty cycle you get this voltage the DC voltage to go up or down Okay, so how does a pulse width modulator work? Okay, now this is based on one of the older uh, UC uh, pulse width modulators. So this is a very general uh, explanation. Okay, now before I go into more detail, I just want to give a little bit more background information. There are two types. PWM control. Okay. Uh, when you look at the PWM uh, uh, chips, uh, some or the first originals that first came out were voltage mode. Okay. Uh, types of PWM, and then later on, uh, current mode uh, uh, were invented. Okay. But remember voltage modes were the first and then the second were the current mode okay is there a difference yes okay there's a big difference okay now what I have here is the small signal model showing both current mode and voltage mode okay let me go back okay on a current mode when you use the current mode in a power supply, the modulator, the, meaning the PWM, the transformer, the flyback switch, in other words, the MOSFET, all of that actually mimics a current source. Current source. It's actually a voltage control current source. Okay, and then this L and C would be the your output filter. Okay, and if you use a voltage mode, the small signal model actually looks like a voltage control voltage source. So basically, voltage mode this uh, looks like a voltage source, and then current mode this looks like a current source. So, sorry, what are the advantages of a current mode? Okay, the biggest advantage and probably the reason why most uh, switch mode power supply designers use current mode is that it offers pulse by pulse current limit. Okay, it protects the power supply against short circuits. What does that mean? Well, let's say if you have a short circuit here on your output, okay, either some uh, maybe a wire got shorted to ground. Well, since it's monitoring the current, the current is fed back and it's always sampled by the PWM. And if you have a short circuit, the current will go up instantaneous very fast, and the current. Uh, protection circuit of a current mode is so fast that what it does it reduces the pulse width 
basically it throttles back in other words it lets the uh, if using a analogy of a car or automobile it it lets up on the gas okay so that's a very very unique uh, feature and very important feature to have especially if you're you have very high currents high powered uh, loads okay so that's one of the big uh, issues okay another issue is number two it simplifies the compensation due to uh, due to well it simplifies it to a first order system okay in this case if this was voltage voltage mode well, let me digress a little bit. If you use voltage mode, since you have a voltage here, and you have a cur a, a, an inductor and a capacitor, what you have is a second order system. In other words, you have a passive component here, which is inductor and a C. So if you were to plot the Bode plot, you would have a, 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 a low pass filter but it would have a 40 dB uh, reduction uh, per decade. Okay, that's because you have two these two components. A first order, you would have a 20 dB per decade. Okay. Now, because you have a current in the current mode, a current going through the inductor, or the inductor does not affect the current going through the in, uh, inductor so basically the inductor is doesn't exist in other words it's kind of like a short okay so basically if you were to do a Bode plot since the inductor vanishes because of the current okay in other words it has no effect the inductor has no effect uh, on the current then what you end up is with the RC network okay so it's a low pass filter so it would go it would have an, uh, f a negative 20 dB uh, per decade uh, attenuation so that's a first order and that is a very very big advantage in that you can compensate with a type 2 okay uh, error amp so in this case with current mode you use a type 2 compensator if you're going to use voltage mode you use the type 3 uh, compensator okay number three it's great uh, line regulation due to the feedback characteristics and then the fourth in current mode you have two feedbacks you have voltage feedback and you have current feedback so you have basically two fe feedback loops when you use current mode okay now going to voltage mode, the advantage is that it has better dynamic uh, range, meaning that the current levels can be very, very, very small. Here, as your current limits uh, or your current level gets much short or, or you minimize your current load, your feedback, current feedback that is fed back into your system gets smaller and smaller. and there's a point that the current so small that it's basically uh, the signal to noise ratio is uh, is high that it doesn't work as well however you don't have that that problem with voltage uh, mode because in voltage mode uh, the sawtooth that is used by the PWM is fixed okay the second advantage is that voltage mode supplies have lower output impedance and therefore perform better uh, as multiple output supplies okay what does that mean means that you can have maybe three or four output in piece uh, output supplies so you can have a three a five and a twelve and they're gonna have a better regulation or cross regulation between them why because it's a lower impedance uh, if you think about it it's a voltage source it uh, is considered a short so when you look in this direction into it you're seeing the impedance of your capacitor and a inductor uh, in series with a short so the impedance looking into this side 
is much lower than this. If you recall, our current source is basically an open. Okay, so if you look at the impedance looking into here, since you have an open here, the L does not exist. So basically, the only impedance that you have is your load and your C. So basically, your voltage mode has a lower impedance due to that fact. Okay, and the third is voltage mode has only one feedback loop. Okay, so now let me see. Okay. Now, the main purpose of the PDLM is to generate a square wave and vary the pulse width, which will vary the DC output of the power supply. Okay, so basically, this is showing a high duty cycle, and if you have a di high duty cycle, you have a higher DC voltage, and if you have a lower uh, duty cycle, then you're going to have a lower DC voltage. Okay. Now the sawtooth is important uh, in order to make the PWM work. Uh, without the sawtooth, basically you can't get it to work. Okay, so here's a very important, and this is what distinguishes between current mode and voltage mode. Okay, very important. In current mode, the sawtooth is generated by the MOSFET or the inductor current. Okay, so basically we monitor the current going through the inductor or through the MOSFET and you should have a current that looks very similar to this. It's a ramp, okay, and that is being fed and is used by the PWM. Okay, in voltage mode we also generate a sawtooth, but the sawtooth on a voltage mode is actually generated by the oscillator. So in this case, a voltage mode, the sawtooth or the amplitude is fixed. In a current mode, it varies with your current. Okay. So these are the two distinguishing factors between current mode and voltage mode. Might not make sense now, but in a little bit, uh, it should make it sense. Okay, so how is the sawtooth used to generate or used to modulate the pulses? Okay, the sawtooth can be generated by a, a oscillator which would be voltage mode or it can be made uh, from the current in the inductor or the MOSFET. Okay. So here's a very simplified form of the PWM. Okay, very simplified. Basically, you have a reference voltage, meaning that you want a voltage that is very, very insensitive to line regulation or line uh, variances and also to temperature. Okay, and, and uh, inside the chip, they use a a band gap. Okay, that band that band gap voltage is fed to a op amp. Okay, in this case, that op amp is called the error amp, and that voltage is fed to the pop, the non-inverting. Okay, and on the inverting pin, we feed a voltage feedback. Basically we tie this line to the input through or the output of the supply through a uh, a divider network. Okay. And the error amp will generate an error voltage that is fed to a comparator. Okay. So if the difference between the feedback voltage and the reference voltage, in this case this one, is great or, or difference is high, then what it does, it generates a higher voltage. Okay. In other words, this voltage that is here. Okay, 
will be will move up okay will be represented by this where it says high error voltage okay that will be at the non-inverting okay and at the inverting is where we actually feed a sawtooth okay remember the sawtooth is fed at this line and on the inverting it's a DC voltage okay so if the error between these two are great then this voltage is going to be high so that's going to shift this DC voltage up and if you notice is writing right on top of this little tip of the sawtooth so what it does it uh, the comparator then when it sees this tip exceed the DC or the high error voltage then it goes down okay and it remains down during this section it remains down okay and then as soon as it goes below the high error voltage then it switches back on and then it goes to the next cycle okay as soon as the ramp goes above the high error voltage it switches back down and so forth okay now let's assume that the voltage difference now is not as great now it's getting closer to to the 1.2 volts okay so then the error amp will output a voltage into the non-inverting that is a low error voltage in other words this voltage swings down okay so what happens basically the same thing as soon as the ramp goes up okay then it switches so as soon as it switches right there it turns off and remains off and basically it's off it's off it's off and then when it switches down it goes up again okay so then during this time is the time that the PWM is on okay and so forth so now if you look in here you have a pulse width that is modulating in other words it's turning on for a longer time in this case it's turning on for a shorter amount of time so in this case this will give you a higher DC average voltage while this will give you a lower DC average okay so now I'm trying to put everything together and hopefully I can explain this where it makes sense it's a little bit involved but uh, I'll give it the best shot and if you have any questions you can always email me okay so this is the block diagram of a simple current mode PWM and I'm explaining this one because this is basically the de facto type of uh, uh, pulse width modulation that we use current mode okay uh, there may be some advantages or application where you will want to use voltage mode but for the most part 90 percent or more or higher of the times you're going to use current mode okay so let me go ahead and explain a little bit if you look at uh, any of your PWM chips, whether it be from LT or uh, Unitro, TI, and so forth, they're going to have something similar to this. Okay. This case, they usually have a 4 volt regulator or some kind of regulator. It doesn't have to be 4 volt. Well, they'll have a regulator and they'll have a band gap in other words it's a reference voltage and typically the reference voltage is close to 1.2 okay they'll have a 
error app and error app is basically an op app you'll have a sawtooth oscillator some kind of an oscillator but in this case I'll, I'll call it a sawtooth okay a squaring circuit where it takes a sawtooth converts it into a a real uh, thin or a very low duty cycle pulse and they'll have a T flip-flop a RS flip-flop a comparator in this case I'm using a 4 input NOR gate and then you have your output voltage okay or your output drivers okay in this case these are going to be complementary so they're they're going to be out of phase okay so when a is high b is slow okay okay so we'll go to the next slide okay so when the 5 volts are applied the 4 volts regulator starts to regulate and then it starts supplying 4 volts to the rest of the other circuits or sub circuits I should say okay so you see that here that 4 volts are routed to the entire system or to the other uh, sub circuits at the same time it also applies 1.25 volts and BGR means band gap reference it applies that to your error app okay so now since the oscillator already has 4 volts it starts oscillating okay in this case in the example that I'm using it will produce a 2 volt peak to peak sawtooth will look something like that and I'll have a 2 volt peak to peak voltage and that is produced uh, by the oscillator okay that sawtooth then is fed into what I call a squaring circuit another name would be the leading edge blanker and what it does it takes the edge or it takes this sawtooth and makes it into a very narrow uh, low duty cycle pulse in other words this will have a duty cycle of basically one percent okay so this is a one percent it's basically a you can call it like an impulse pulse okay once the four volts comes up to regulation typically they'll have a under voltage circuit in this case I call it the power OK it senses the your four volt regulator and your bank app and once it knows that it's at their appropriate level it releases and basically uh, brings this down to zero and basically says hey everything's working fine so that goes to zero okay and it will feed a voltage of uh, of zero a logic state of zero to one leg of your four input nor now as you have these clock pulses in this case you have the one percent duty cycle clocks as soon as the edge or the positive edge goes up the T flip-flop will trigger or will go and make this line to zero okay so now you have a zero here And you have a zero here okay so you have two legs that are already assigned a state 
fact. Then, by the same token, that same uh, clock signal, 1%, and, uh, is also fed to your RS flip flop. Okay. Now, keep in mind that since this is 1% on and 99% of the time it's off, as soon as it goes off, okay, remember it's going to be at this date off 99% of the time. So what it does, it sets this to zero. So now you have zero, zero, zero. Okay. Okay. Which is what I just mentioned that so this line is 99% of the time is zero. You get a zero here. It sets this excuse me then it completes or satisfies the input condition of the NOR gate so you will have zero 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 so then three zeros will be a zero and then ah, you negate it so then shoot output a high this case it'll output a 4 or a 4 volt to your outputs uh, driver which then will make output A go high in this case 5 volts in this case this line or the output driver be, would be two MOSFETs an inverter MOSFETs and usually this would be tied to 5 volts so you would get a 5 volt if it's a 5 volt system or it may be a 12 volt system so regardless you would get a high voltage or a positive going voltage okay now keep in mind this would go to your output transistor okay so now when this goes up it turns the MOSFET in this case the MOSFET uh, on the primary uh, MOSFET in a flyback and we typically monitor the current through the MOSFET okay that signal is fed back to your comparator so this waveform will appear on this pin the non-inverting of the comparator so you'll get it a ramp or a voltage that goes like this and that will be a representative of the current coming either from a transformer or the MOSFET okay now keep in mind that the slope of this is the DIDT okay it's a slope and basically it's the voltage across the inductor divided by the inductance so that will give you that slope okay now while that during this time as the current is ramping the error amp monitors the p output power supply or the yeah the output of the power supply basically this here and what it does it monitors this voltage and compares it with the 1.25 voltage okay and let's pretend that this is 0 and this is 1.25 okay so there's a big difference so what it's going to do is it's going to produce a voltage at the output which would be this error voltage okay Now that error voltage is fed into the comparator, okay, and if you notice this, this is the error voltage, and it's compared against the ramp, okay. So remember this is the current ramp, the black, 
and the error voltage remember the error voltage is the difference between these two signals okay so they're compared in this case right there and as soon as the, the current crosses the error amp voltage it flips in other words it triggers your comparator in other words it sees that a this voltage and this voltage are the same okay and what it does it produces a high okay what does it do well it goes into an RS flip-flop and it resets this okay so now your four volts in this case from the RS flip-flop which came from the comparator is fed back into the four input NOR gates so remember for this to be high all of these have to be low now if you notice you got a zero 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 and a four it's no longer all zeros there's one that's high so basically this voltage should terminate and goes back to zero okay so now once this goes back to zero if you have a zero here then this output A should go to zero and this voltage should go to five okay so now that resets goes to zero and that's what happens if you notice right there as soon as it hits that edge then it resets turns off the MOSFET and basically you have your current wrap that looks like this okay and if you remember some of the waveforms that I uh, took on the bench the current wrap looks like this okay and then it just continues and basically continues the next uh, cycle okay so just keep in mind the current mode has two feedback circuits and the feedback circuit is this here's the feedback voltage feedback okay and has the current feedback from the transformer so basically two okay so now this is what voltage mode feedback looks basically one slide and what it does is you basically eliminate this section in other words this signal is actually connected to there okay so basically once you know how a current mode works uh, going through how a voltage mode how it works is very trivial or it should be very easy to understand okay well in a nutshell uh, that's how a uh, PWM works if you have any questions I know it's a lot of material and I probably went and maybe skipped an idea here and there but if there are questions uh, feel free to uh, email me and uh, and I can answer any questions that you may have thank you for watching